Welcome to Iris Insight, the channel for Iris app development using Swift UI and Swift. Today we will be completing the pop up sheets to make it more functional so that the users can search and filter for the different types of fruits. and also select a fruit of interest. So this is what we're doing today. First thing we need to do within our Swift UI project is to create a new Swift UI view and call it Fruitless Sheet. Select a Swift UI view, click on next, and then just rename it as Fruit List Sheet. Click on create. And then After line 10, into the following, at binding bar is sheet presented. Ooh. And the purpose of that variable is to control the presentation of the sheet. So within the fruitless sheet, it has a bindable variable which we just created called is sheet presented. And then in the content view, there'll be a similar variable called is sheet presented, which is at state. Next variable we need to create is another bindable variable at binding bar selected fruit name string image string question mark for optional so what that line does it creates a bindable tuple to capture the selected fruit name and image tuples are a way of grouping multiple values into a single compound value. So a tuple is a little bit similar to an object or a class which can have properties. Create another variable called let fruits, which is an array, a string array, open bracket. Apple, banana, orange, kiwi, mango, Pineapple. And the purpose of the fruit array is to store the actual fruit names so that the fruit names and the actual fruits will be populated within the list. We need to create another function called image name. Function image name for fruit string return the string return fruit dot lowercase. And what that does, it converts the fruit name to lowercase. So instead of having like a capital A, it would be lowercase a.
Next thing we need to do is I think we have to create one more, yeah, one more variable at state private var search text equals comma comma And then within the the body some view, what we need to do on line twenty two, delete line twenty two, and then type in navigation view. This if let's root. I mean, if let filters filtered fruit is equal to fruits Fruits dot filter So what that will do is check to make sure that the array contains a value and it isn't nil by doing save on wrapping if let the save on wrapping is equal to the variable. And then if the case is true and there is a matching value of that fruit in the array, it will do the next procedure. So let's do that now. Search text is empty. Question mark true. Dollar sign zero. Localize. Case insensitive contains search text. So, what that will do, it will do a comparison on upper or lower case strings. So, each type of string is equal within a search. So, if this string exists, it always returns true. If it's for example like Apple or lowercase Apple within the search criteria, next thing we need to do is put a comma there, not Filtered fruit is empty. So if the filtered fruits is an empty, that means our array contains an array of fruits. For a Filtered fruit ID still open bracket fruit in. And what that does, it iterates like loops through or over the filtered fruits using the for each, and then it applies a identifier using. ID backslash dot cell, that's how it applies a identifier. So that each row within the array is unique. 
so that the loop works correctly within the for loop and for the list as well. Selected groups equals name groups image 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 name for groups. So what that does when a fruit is selected it sets its name and image and also we need to close the sheet after the image is selected so we type in is sheet presented equals false that will close or dismiss the sheet which is the screen and then We need a closing bracket here on line 32 and then another opening bracket and then the next thing we need to do is to display the actual fruit. Now there's an error somewhere on line 28. Um, what is this? It says fruits, fruiting, fruiting. Oh, we've forgotten to add our button to enable the user to select their fruit from the list. So that should be on line 29. So we need to create a button called button. Open bracket. Action Let's compile it just to make sure that there's no more errors. Oh, there's another error expecting closing brackets, so we do that afterwards. Um, so the next thing we need to do is to display our selected fruit. So we need to create a H stack, horizontal stack, H stack, image, image name, for fruit. And then the next thing we need to do is make the image resizable. So just type in dot resizable dot scale to fit dot frame. Width fifty height. Fifty dot background color dot white dot corner radius dot ten. I mean corner radius ten. And now we have the image of the fruit that we selected. We need to add the actual name of the fruit using text. So just type in text, fruit, dot font, dot headline. And then just give our fruit some padding. Dot vertical eight
that's what we need to do on line 50 type in an else statement else if you type in a, a fruit that's not in the list it should display an error message so this is what we'll do now else Now we need to open the emoji picker. So to do that, just press on control and command and space. So that's control, command and space and then just type in whatever fruit you want to I just type in apple so apple is the emoji fruit that I'll be using which is a green apple let me just place it there and then just type in oops no matching fruits found Oh yeah, we need to add another emoji. So just select Control, Command, and Space. I'll just let, um type in banana. Next thing we need to do is style the text. So just type in font. Dot font. Dot title. Font weight. Got bold, got foreground colour, got red, got padding, got background, got white, got corner radius, got ten, got shadow. Radius dot five dot padding dot vertical twenty. Next thing we need to do, oh yeah, we can delete our preview as we're not using it. So the next thing we need to do is on line 63 just type in dot searchable dollar sign search text from Search root and what that does it adds a searchable modifier to enable search functionality on this line here, line sixty three. Dot navigation title root and then we add our final closing bracket for this view and now it should compile correctly it compiles so now we need to go back to the content view and see if we can run it The content view, this is the content view. Fruit list sheet. Yeah, so we can run it. So now when we run it, we will see the list of fruits on the screen, which enables the user to perform a filter. Oh, there's something else we need to do. We need to add our images, just forgotten. 
So the images, we need to add it to the assets folder. I have some images here already in the fruits directory. You can download them from Google if you want to. I'm just going to um, drag these fruits onto the assets. See, this is the asset, so I just dragged it onto the pane here. And now we can run it. So now if you click on the fruit pop-up, I think there's an issue with the padding on that button. So now click on the fruit pop-up and then it shows the pop-up that has a list of fruits and now we can filter on the fruits. Type in banana. You can some banana. I spell it incorrectly. It says, oops, no matching fruits found. The pineapple image is not being displayed. Oh, this one is spelled incorrectly. So we just have to remove the PNG and rerun it. Pineapple should now be in the list. Yes, it is. I'll test the searchable function again. Just type in mango. If I type in mango x, it doesn't exist. That functionality doesn't work at the moment because we haven't implemented it. If we click on the fruit, it should show the fruit on the actual parent screen. So let's do that now. So to do that, we need to create another view, which is called Fruit Details View. So create another SwiftUI view, new file, select SwiftUI, click on Next, call this view Fruit Detail View, click on Create. Delete the preview. And then now, after line 10, and to the following, bar, fruit, open bracket name, string, image, string. So what we've done previously in the other Swift UI view, we're creating another tuple to hold the name of the fruit and the image of the fruit. On line 14, delete line 14, and then enter vstack, image, fruit, dot image, dot resizable, dot scale to fix, dot frame width, 120, and the height is 120. So here, we're just setting the image size of 120 by 120. Dot background, dot white, dot corner radius, 20, text, fruit dot name, dot font, title, dot padding, 
Let's just add some padding around the text. And then after line 26, let's add dot background, dot white, dot corner radius, 20, dot shadow, shadow radius, 8. Dot padding top 20. So the lines between 27 and 30, what they do, it adds the white background to the entire view and then it, it applies a corner radius to the entire view of 20. It adds a shadow effect with the radius of 8 and then it adds a top padding to the entire view. So now we need to go back to the content view to connect that view so that it's displayable. So on the content view, what we've done last week on line 28, just on comment line 28. So line 28 or line 27, it will unwrap the selected value, the selected fruit from line 27 and then on line 28 that selected fruit is then passed to the the view and then displayed on that view so now the fruit it will be displayable when we select it from the list or perform a filter on the list let's run it now to test it Click on the fruit pop up button. Now select a fruit. I'll select orange. As you can see, orange is displayed on the parent view. And then if you click on the button again, you can select another fruit, and that fruit is displayed on the parent view. And you can perform the filter, filter for different fruits. Mango, mango doesn't exist, so it shows this error message. And um, for some homework, you can try to correct this padding for the button. Because the padding for the button should be a bit neater, but that can be a little task for you. For next week and if you're able to do it or unable to do it you can supply a comment on the channel to let me know how you've done it or to let me know if you weren't able to do it this code showcases a swift ui app presenting a pop-up sheet to select and display various fruit details the content view handles the main ui why the fruit list sheet defines the sheet's content. Thank you for joining us. If you found this tutorial helpful, please comment, like and subscribe. See you next week.